On this episode of the hashtag Ask the Anxiety Guys show, I'm talking about anxiety relapse, health anxiety, and your super conscious mind. Warriors, welcome. Your questions matter. You're listening to the Ask the Anxiety Guy show. This podcast episode is brought to you by the End the Anxiety Program, a downloadable CBT-based program created by the Anxiety Guy himself to help heal your emotional distress and put anxiety behind you once and for all. Visit www.anxietyexit.com to learn more today. Warriors, welcome to episode number 138 of the Anxiety Guy podcast. This is the hashtag Ask the Anxiety Guy show. I'm your host, Dennis Simsek, and with me again, Robin Olson. Robin, how are you? I'm good. I'm happy to be back. I, uh, I'm i sad I missed last week's episode about herbs because that's right up my alley, but what do we got this week? We got a lot of good stuff, and a lot of people out there were supremely jealous of your retreat, your silent retreat. Did you have a good time? Oh my goodness. So I'm in Bali, Indonesia, and it's the real Bali out there. It's beautiful rice patties, recommended to anybody who just wants to get away, get silent, meditation, yoga, so good. And then we had a friend over for the week and took him to Ubud. Indonesia, where we went to the monkey forest. That was interesting. And those monkeys, they may look cute, but they are mean and nasty. What you don't want to do, tip of the day, if you ever come across a monkey, is don't look them in the eyes or else they will attack you. They will be threatened and they will feel like you are on the offense. I mean, they're so cute and we were really taking over their habitat, so you can't Mm. blame them. I mean... You Mm. know, it's only if you look at them directly in the eye or if you really get up and bug them. Mm. Yeah, they're going to attack you. (laughs) True. So enough monkey business. Let's get into the Q&A. Got a couple of really great questions here this week. Um, Got a couple of private ones, two from the Facebook tribe. And I want to get, you know, three to five in each and every week here. We're starting on the Facebook tribe by Stacy Turner. Stacy asks the question of, Dennis, how do you let go of the fear of relapsing back to that old state of thinking and being? I have been doing good for six months, and I have now had two panic attacks in a month's time, and now I'm scared. I'm going backwards, and that terrifies me. Stacy, relapse can manifest due to a lack of the same self-awareness and consciousness that you had during your transition. Therefore, falling victim to the thoughts and reactions of your survival brain again, rather than responding. Responding got you to that successful state, to that neutral to pleasant emotional state. Now, or... It can manifest due to the fact that you're hungry or tired. Simply because if one of these two components are off, you will become more instinctual and reactive throughout the day. This is just your nature. And you will become less conscious and logical, which will lead to anxiety and panic. Stacy, I believe you must shift your thinking from trying to let go of the fear of relapse to kanai, meaning constant and never-ending improvement. For example, when I was a professional tennis player, I realized that the better problem solver and hard worker I was on the practice court, the easier life was during the competition. Remember this, fear only gets attached 
to you when you've lost sight of who you're becoming. Fear only gets attached to you when you've lost sight of who you're becoming. As long as your habits match the person you desire to become, you will in time reach the learning stage of unconscious competence, where who you've become is effortless. Your two panic attacks in the last month were either due to perceptions and thoughts that led to the attack, or an event that the unconscious mind felt justified the fight-or-flight response. Either way, evaluate the lead-up to the attack, the moment of the attack, and the post-attack, and recognize what could have been altered. The second question came from Instagram, and this was a direct message from Sarah Dale Zamora. And I took this question, I took two questions actually, two of her questions. I'm taking these two questions because I like depth. I really like depth. And these two questions have a lot of mental, emotional, physical, and energetic depth to them. The question is, how is anxiety linked to a spiritual awakening. Ooh, that's something I like. Now, let's get into it. In my eyes, anxiety, my friends, is a call to action by a higher intelligence that is trying to mold us into the type of creation that can achieve our life's purposes. We have a choice to view anxiety as a challenging means to a deeper and more fulfilling end, or something that was installed into us by environments, beings, experiences that cared very little about our well-being. We have a choice there. This is where progress meets blame. The people that progress view anxiety as a small part of the mission they are on, that will lead to self-mastery and great contribution. The people that blame get stuck in a thought cycle of me versus them and base the meaning of life around survival, not growth. And to add on to this, prior to anxiety, I was very much confused, brainwashed, led. I was led Wherever my life was going, I was led in that direction. I was meant to be a tennis professional. I was supposed to go to school and get good grades. I was supposed to do this and that. I was supposed to be a certain person. And then anxiety showed up. And then I molded myself internally. And I became, I began to lead my life in the direction that was my purpose and my mission which is what I'm living out right now. So without anxiety, I wouldn't be here talking to you. You wouldn't be listening and applying these suggestions and these opinions that I have. This doesn't mean that someone who's going through anxiety right now is going to be a coach in the future or a mentor. This could be anything. This could be your personal career choice, or another way you want to contribute to the world. You want to leave this planet better than how you came to it. That's the goal. That's why we're here. And then she asked a second question. The second question goes like this. Could you expand or do a video on the super conscious mind? And I'm going to prefer to expand on it really quickly here. This is, my friends, the infinite mind of potential. We're talking about the superconscious mind here. The superconscious mind can only be identified, accessed, and used when we consistently practiced altered states of being through meditation and other ways. It's the part of the subconscious mind responsible for creating miracles and thinking beyond the way society thinks. When the superconscious mind is accessed, we no longer think. We no longer think. We intuitively feel like we know 
and we just know. We defy the internal conflicts between thoughts and suggestions. Our neural activity in our brains no longer are connected to our past emotional traumas as we have connected safety to all that has happened to us in the past. This is a reflection of your superconscious mind. Just a little little piece, little tidbit there. So thank you so much, Sarah Dale Zamora, for those two awesome Instagram questions. I hope I've answered them. We went deep there, energy-wise, mind-wise. I like it. I like depth. Third question comes in from Ryan Hills. Ryan emailed me. He said, Dennis, do you ever get bored of talking about anxiety? (laughs) This is a good one. Oh my goodness. I feel like you would never, ever get bored of talking about anxiety. Agreed. Comes up at breakfast, lunch, dinner, but um, you know that you've found your true purpose when you can just chat about it and it's, it's fun and exciting for you and every day you're just wanting to, you know, learn more and that's when you know. <laughs> totally. And I'm going to have a short answer for this one. Um, does Elon Musk get bored of talking about rockets in space? No. Does Bill Gates get bored of talking about technological trends? No. I don't get bored because I am confronted with progress and success achieved by others each and every day. That's why I don't get bored. Very, very simple. That's my answer. The fourth question comes from Twitter, a DM from Henry James. Henry asks, Dennis, could my heart palpitations and off feelings be related to anxiety? Henry, it's possible. It's possible. That's all I can say to you. It's possible. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a therapist. I'm none of those things. I'm not a mind reader. I just want you to know that this show is not about the reassurance seeking. I'm not going to go deep into these types of questions anymore. I want you to figure it out. I want you to look deep within your emotional traumas that you've gone through, what you're hiding within your body and your mind, what's showing up in terms of emotions as you go through the day, look at your lifestyle patterns, fix your diet. This is all on you. So again, it's possible. Question number five. Danny Von Felt from the Facebook tribe. You'll notice that I'm a little bit biased about the Facebook tribe. It's fine. I just love them. Like you love them? Yeah. I I love them. Instagram too. Instagram too. Instagram's getting there. And Twitter, you're good with Twitter. I'm just, I don't, I don't understand Twitter. (laughs) I didn't understand Twitter for a long time. I still don't understand Twitter. There's still lots of you and we love you. (laughs) So... Facebook tribe, Danny, I am a nurse and I have somatic system disorder or bad health anxiety. How do you separate yourself from people that have illnesses or conditions that you are terrified of getting? I am around this every day. Love, love, love my job, but it sometimes terrifies me. Understandable. Here we have a bit of a challenge because we have these neurons within our system called mirror neurons. These mirror neurons are responsible for empathy and feeling what others around us are feeling. It's a built-in system, basically, that's not only responding closely to another person's emotions, but their intentions as well. So I understand where you're coming from. This means that if someone has a certain intention that your subconscious mind picks up on, you will begin applying to your life similar intentions as others. Now, here's what to do to start overriding the fear when it shows up. Number one, prior to going to work each and every day, visualize yourself Caring for others, but not becoming others. Visualize with great detail how you'd want to think, talk, and act around these people. That's number one. You want to make sure that you do that every single day prior to work. Number two, wear an elastic band 
and practice the three steps I've mentioned in previous podcasts, which are snap, which means catch yourself in the moment of thinking irrationally. Catch yourself in the moment where emotions show up that you don't want to entertain any further. Become conscious, practice self-awareness, snap the elastic band, and catch yourself in that moment. Second step is to counter the thought with another perspective, meaning what's the opposite? What's the opposite? Or what's another angle as far as you seeing what's truly going on right here? And the third step would be build evidence around that new perspective. So catch the thought in the moment, counter the thought with another perspective, and build evidence around it. This is what you want to do as you're going through the day to recondition yourself. I'm a big fan of elastic bands when they're used properly. Now, to add to this, just one more thing that you need to do, and that is to find a role model. Bring the role model with you when you go to work, meaning you are that person. You think the way that person thinks. You act the way that person acts. Your physiology looks like that person. You are that person. So you must have a role model. And this is kind of like getting ready for a big show. You got a big show coming up in a few months, and you're going through the routines. You're getting ready. I mean, you're getting ready for the role. Look at it like that. And try to emphasize the idea that Each and every day is a practice opportunity. It's not, I'm going to try to shove away the problems or the challenges. I'm going to look at it directly and identify it when it shows up so I can do something about it. Robin, thanks so much for helping me out today. I love you. And I love all of you out there. Quote for the show today is, It's better to prepare for an upcoming challenge rather than wait for it to occur and become reactive. This is by Elon Musk. It's better to prepare for an upcoming challenge rather than wait for it to occur and become reactive, which leads me to the question of the week, which is, what are you not preparing well enough for? Your workplace environment? A certain challenging time of the day? A symptom? Answer this question on YouTube in the comments section. I love you all so much. You are more than anxiety. Have a wonderful day. Warriors, remember, you are more than anxiety. You keep asking the questions and I'll keep answering them.